Hey guys, so before I start this video, I just want to tell you something. So, I have already done a tutorial on the 5x5, 6x6, and 7x7, and I know that, but the method I used for the centers on those tutorials was very weird. So what I wanted to do was actually make the tutorials again, and this time I'll use a more common method. So, the notation's the same on the 4x4. So, this is the up face, the right face, and this two up layers is lowercase, and one layer is just two and then the letter. So, it's the same as on the 4x4. Four four. So, and the method is the same. We solve the centers, then the edges, then solve it like a giant 3x3. Three three. So, now what I'm going to do... Oh, by the way, before I start, yeah, the 3x3 three three stage, there's no parity. Oh yeah, and one more thing, um, before I start, before you ask any questions, I want you to watch this entire video, so I think I'm just gonna, um, scramble this. Alright, so I think this is well scrambled. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to form the white center. So here I have found the white in middle piece. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to attach two edge centers to this white middle center. So I see this edge center here, and I can rotate it up to the white center. And this white center edge here can be joined up if I rotate it. So now I have formed a white 1x3 bar. Next, I already have two pieces solved for the next 1x3 bar. So I'm going to try to attach it to this third piece. Now what I can do is I can rotate the third piece to the bottom right. Rotate the, this piece to the bottom right so that I can join them up. To put this bar in, I'm going to rotate it and then put it in. Next. I'm going to try to form my last 1x3 bar. So this piece, I can rotate it here and join it up with this corner center. And the last piece I need is at the bottom. So I can rotate this side here and then put this corner on the bottom left so that I can put it where it needs to go. And next I'm going to rotate this side and join this bar up with the other two white bars. Next, I'm going to place my white in the bottom, and I'm going to do the yellow. I can see that I already have two pieces solved with this yellow middle bar. And for the third piece, I'm going to rotate it to where it needs to go. But as you can see, I've messed up the whites, so I need to rotate it out of the way and fix the whites. Now let's form another bar. Let's try to attach this corner center to this edge center. I'm going to rotate the edge center and then put the corner center next to it. So I have now formed a um, one by two block. And to join it up with this third piece, I see that this piece is on the top right. So if I rotate this slot to the top right, I can put the piece in, but to, as you can see, I've messed up my whites. But if I rotate this yellow bar here, I can insert it in while fixing my whites. And now I need to form the final yellow 1x3 bar. Imagine that one of the pieces we need is on the side that we're working on. What I would do is just move it onto a face that doesn't already have yellow on it, and then just rotate it down out of the way, then back up, so that we can use this bit in the middle as our working space. And I can run this piece up with this two, these two pieces by rotating it here and then joining it up. And now, to insert this piece in, I see that if I rotate it here, I mess up the whites, and if I fix the whites, I don't join it in. So what I have to do is rotate it adjacent to these two bars, 
replace it with one of the bars. Move this so that I can put this bar in while also fixing the lights. I'm going to do the blue center next. So I can see that these two pieces can be attached with this third one simply with one rotation. And this, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. So here we have a T. So what I'm going to do is this intersection here is directly under this center edge. I'm just going to rotate this up out of the way then back down to move it onto the face below the T so that this is easier to visualize. So this piece is on the right and this intersection point is also on the right. So if I replace it with the outer bar, rotate this out of the way and then I put the outer bar in, that's a cool way to um, do what's called the T strategy. I'm going to try to attach this corner center to this edge center. But if I rotate it down, it's not joined up properly, so I need to put the edge center on the top so that it can be joined up properly. Next, if I to join this corner center with these two centers, I have to rotate it here. But as you can see, I've broken up this blue bar, so I need to rotate it out of the way, fix the blue, then put this bar in place. Next, I'm going to form the red. And it does get a little bit more tricky to form these centers intuitively, but you should be able to do it with enough practice. I'm going to join this red piece up with these two red pieces, just keeping in mind that any move I do needs to be reversed, unless it's an outer face turn, because like a wide right turn will mess up the blue, the wide up turn will mess up the whites and the yellows. So I can use the T strategy again. So the T strategy went like this, remember? And now I'm gonna form the last bar. I'm gonna join this piece up with this piece, move it out of the way to fix the blue. And this, these two pieces at the bottom uh, can be joined up with this red piece so if I join it up, rotate it out of the way, and then fix the blue. So the fourth center, isn't that difficult? Uh, all you need to remember is to reverse any moves that you do. So to insert this in, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to move it to the face that is um, right under the red side. Replace it with one of the bars. Move this out of the way so that I can solve the reds and fix the blue at the same time. And we're going to solve the last two centers next but we got a bit too lucky here, so I think I'm going to make some changes. Okay, so now I'm gonna focus on the front and I'm going to try to form a green one by three bar. And I see this one by two and to join it up with this third edge, I can do that easily by hiding this piece on the red side, moving this so that the piece can join back up. And to form the second bar, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this vertical so that I don't bring any green pieces up when I do the following trick. To join this piece up with this piece, I'm going to hide this piece in the back, move this piece so that I can join it up with that piece. And I'm going to insert this bar in by rotating this side up, putting the bar in that plane of movement, then rotating the bar back down. And now, let's try to attach these two pieces to this piece. What I'm going to do is actually a trick. I'm going to move this piece adjacent to the edge and I'm going to move the edge here, rotate it two times, then move this back so that I can turn the middle to hide it, rotate this piece to the bottom so that I can join it up. And now I can insert it in by rotating this up, bringing it to this plane of movement, then bringing it back down. And the last two centers is a little bit tricky, so I'll do a couple more examples. Okay, so again we got this L shape where I can hide this in the back, move this horizontal, and then join it back up. They got the T, so I'm going to use the T strategy. And now I'm going to do the last bar. So, um, what I'm going to do is a similar trick where I replace it 
where to bring this piece to the top, I replace it with these two pieces, rotate it two times, then bring the two pieces back. And now, so that I don't bring any uh, green pieces up when I'm doing this, I'm actually going to rotate the orange to the right, hide this in the back, move this here so that I can join it up. So whenever you hide pieces in the back or whatever, um, you want to make sure that when you're hiding it, the, f the thing you're bringing up from the front is not a bar that you've already solved. If that's impossible, you're going to have to use what's called a commutator. But, well, it's not a commutator. I call it an algorithm. Other people call it a commutator. But um, on the 6x6 six six and up, you will have to use algorithms to put in your last few pieces of the last two centers. So I'm going to insert this in by bringing it adjacent to these two, rotating this side up, putting it into that plane of movement, then bringing this back down. And... I'm going to do one more example of the last two centers. So again, I'm going to focus on the green and I'm going to form the first bar by putting this piece in, rotating it out of the way, then bringing this side back up. Second bar is already formed, so I'm going to insert it. And remember that when this piece is opposite these pieces, um, we could do a trick where we hide it, rotate this side and then bring it back correctly. We can either try to bring it opposite these pieces or try to bring these pieces next to each other so that we can hide this piece, bring this piece, then join them up. So I think that I'm actually going to do both. So what I can do is hide this layer, bring this here, and then put this layer back so that this piece is opposite so we can rotate the middle, rotate this back to the bottom, then put it back in. And we can also try to bring them like this. So what I'm going to do is hide this bit, bring the corner up, then unhide it, and then bring this unsolved bar here so that when we hide this piece, we don't bring anything solved up, bring this here, and then put the hidden piece back, and then insert. And this will take a little bit of trial and error, but just trust me, you will get used to solving your last two centers. Okay, so next I'm going to form the edges. So what I'm going to do is put white on the top and I'm going to pick an edge to start with. I'm going to start with um, white and blue because we have these two pieces already solved. So I'm going to bring this in, but we won't be able to just bring it in like that in, in a little bit, and um, we'll see why. And let me try to find the other white and blue piece. Here it is. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to work um, on this slice. So with white on the top and yellow, we're going to work in the middle here. So... We want to bring this white and blue piece to the right here. But when bringing a piece to the right to join it up with pieces on the left, we need to check if the color of a piece on the left here matches the color of the color of the piece facing on the top um, that we want to bring to the right. In this case, the piece from the front, which is white, and the color on the top, which is white, do match. The algorithm for bringing a piece to the right, if they do match, is front, right, anti-clockwise, front, anti-clockwise, right. So, not too difficult. What I'm going to do is turn the middle to join this piece up with these pieces. I have now formed my white and blue edge. So, I am going to store it on the top. Here's how you store it on the top. Make sure that the edge on the front is not solved, then do the algorithm right, up anti-clockwise, right anti-clockwise. And that stores this edge on the top here. So we're going to want to store all four edges on white, four edges on white, then four edges on yellow, then we'll be done with this step. Basically, what happens is you allow yourself to do anything to the centers on this axis, 
But you need to make sure that every right turn you do, you undo. Every front turn you do, you undo. But you can do any slices like this, which is why you need an algorithm to bring a piece from the top to the right. Next, I'm going to do yellow and green because we again have two pieces of salt and there's another yellow and green here that can join up. But as you can see, when I join it up, it's flipped wrong. So I'm going to break it apart and I'm going to use an algorithm to flip this edge so that it's flipped correctly. So what this algorithm does is it flips the edges like this and it also flips them like that. So the middle edge won't be affected, it will just be flipped like this. But the outer edges will be moved from top to bottom and bottom to top when we use this algorithm to flip an edge in its place. The algorithm is right up, right anti-clockwise, front, right anti-clockwise, front anti-clockwise, right. And as you can see, this piece can now be joined correctly. And the front edge is not solved, so I can store this on the top with right, up, right, anti-clockwise. Next, I'm going to do white and green. So, what I'm going to do is, again, this middle edge is flipped, so I need to bring it to another face, flip it in place with the algorithm I showed you, right, up, right anti-clockwise front right anti-clockwise front anti-clockwise right and then put it in and i know that the centers are fixed right now that will always be the case so i need to find the last white and green piece and it's on the yellow side so i need to bring it here so that i can see that i need to rotate it to the right and again the color of the piece on the front pieces on the left facing you match is with the color here facing up so I need to use the algorithm for when they're matching. Front, right, anti-clockwise, front, anti-clockwise, right. Join them up. And then make sure this edge is not salt. Put it on the top with right, up, anti-clockwise, right, anti-clockwise. And now I am going to join this blue and yellow piece up with this piece. And now it's flipped correctly. And... I am going to find another blue and yellow piece. It's on the yellow side. So if I rotate it here, I see that the front does not match with the top. The algorithm in this case is the same algorithm that we use to store an edge on the white with yellow side. So we need to go right, up anti-clockwise, right anti-clockwise, and now we can join them up. And now we're going to use that same algorithm to store it on the white side. So now we've stored all four all of our first four edges on the white side. So we're gonna put the white on the bottom and we never need to look there again. This blue and red piece, I see these two blue and red pieces and this one blue and red piece here, but I need to flip this piece in place in order to bring it up to the top. So I'm gonna flip it in place with right, up, right anti-clockwise, front, right anti-clockwise, front anti-clockwise, right then put it in place. And now I'm going to store it at the top. And here, um, this white and orange piece can join up with this other one, but it would be flipped wrong. So I need to bring it out, flip it in place, and join it in correctly. As the algorithm for flipping an edge in place is kind of intuitive, I would like you to memorize it. Um, so, all right, so right now, the front matches with the top, so we need to insert this in with front, right, any clockwise, front, any clockwise, right. So I do want you to memorize all these algorithms. So store it on the top. And now, here is another case. We have this edge that's flipped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the middle piece out, flip it in place, and put it in correctly, and insert it at the top. We have one more edge left to do, and um, I see this yellow and orange piece, 
but that can join up to make a flipped edge. But did you know that if a piece is flipped, that means it actually belongs down here. So this piece, as it would be flipped, actually belongs up here. So if I flip it in place, put it where it wants to go, flip this in place to put this other piece in correctly, then I have formed this yellow and orange edge, which I can store on the top. Now that we've solved all of our first eight edges, I would like you to fix the centers. And we're not going to destroy the centers like that to solve our last four edges. Okay, so here's how you solve the last four edges. I'm going to do um, green and red. So there are three cases. The first case, so you don't have any two solved pieces connected with that particular edge. What you need to do is join two pieces up, flip them in place so that you can fix the centers. And now this piece here, this one piece that we need to bring, wants to be on the face, on the, it wants to be right next to the two that we've already solved. So the next case is that we have two pieces solved. So imagine that this piece were in a position that it could join up with the pieces here. But then how do we fix the centers? What we need to do is actually flip this in place because we want it adjacent to these two. So if you got that, then that's good. Once this piece is adjacent to these two, I want you to look at this piece and tell me where it needs to go. This piece needs to go right here, so it needs to take places with this white and red piece. So I'm going to bring this white and red piece above the piece that needs to go there. I'm going to flip it in place, that way it will be in that spot, and I can bring it back while also fixing the centers. This next case is that you happen to get two edges solved, but flipped. What I want you to do in this case is take this edge and you want to flip it so that it's adjacent to the two edges that are flipped. Because remember that this edge actually wants to go here. This one wants to go over there. So if I put this edge in correctly, I can flip this in place and then put the other edge in. And now, if I bring the last two centers adjacent to each other by turning the front face two times, I now see that I got the same case again, twice. But both of these edges and their flipped edges are diagonal from each other, so we need to flip one of the edges in place. We're going to do orange-blue. So I'm going to replace it, flip this, and bring this orange and blue to connect. And then the last edge will either have edge parity like this, or it will be solved. If it's at edge parity, then um, use the same algorithm that you would use to flip this edge on the 4x4. Four four. However, remember that one edge flipped is impossible on a 3x3. Three three. Like, you can try to, like, twist it, and the pieces are likely to fall out. There's no way to flip one edge on a 3x3 three three with an algorithm. But on a 4x4 you can because it's actually two edges. So I'm assuming you've already seen my 4x4 tutorial. So the same algorithm that you use to flip an edge on a 4x4. I want you to use it to fix this edge parity on a 5x5. So because there are many different algorithms that people might use. Just use your own algorithm that you use for the 4x4. And I won't really bother writing my algorithm on the screen. So now I fixed the yellow and red edge. Okay, so the next step is to just solve this like a 3x3 three three with giant centers, long edges, and tiny corners.
that's basically how you solve the 5 by 5 cube.